Okay, I've written about this before, and I'm gonna make this video, and then I'm not gonna touch this up subject again. It's just, it, it's really, it's completely inane. You're not gonna see my other physician and scientist acquaintance and colleagues even mentioning this, but I am getting tons and tons of messages from people absolutely petrified because there's all these young millennials on YouTube who were vegan and are no longer vegan. And they're posting these videos, why I'm no longer vegan and are they right? And should I not be vegan? And is it ruining my body and all that kind of stuff? And I don't know, it, it's crazy to me. I mean, it's absolutely crazy because these are kids posting this stuff. I mean, these are like young kids, a lot of them with eating disorders who are posting videos about why they are no longer vegan. I did not become vegan because I saw a YouTube video that told me to become vegan or a, I wasn't, I didn't see some guy and think, oh, that guy's vegan, therefore I should be vegan. I did it because of science. Um, I did it because of research that I did. I did it because of how I saw a whole food plant-based diet work to people. I did it because of the environment and finding out what animal products and animal agriculture does to our environment. I did it because of the absolute torture that happens to animals. Which brings up a point, veganism is an ethic. So I don't know, these people that say I'm leaving veganism are basically saying I'm changing my ethics, I guess. Um, I know true vegans. True vegans are vegan for the animals. I mean, they don't have a drop of leather, they don't even wear wool, uh, and they are completely dedicated to helping protect animals. And they, are, they would never leave veganism because they got a zit or they got gas. That just, that wouldn't even come up in their mind because they're so strongly for the animals. This actually, in some ways, hurts the, the vegan movement in, in, in this one manner. A lot of the studies done on vegans use ethical vegans in there. So for instance, the EPIC study that was done in Oxford, there were a lot of ethical vegans in that group. And when you looked at their diet, it was very low in fiber, and some of them didn't even get 500 milligrams of calcium, so they had extremely low calcium levels. And so the, you would then make these generalized statements about vegans and their health. Um, and by the way, they were still extremely healthy, but they would have been even healthier had they followed uh, a more balanced diet, but they're not in it for health. Uh, they're in it for the animals. And so these YouTubers that are leaving veganism, they're not vegan, they're leaving their previous diet. And let me tell you, the diet that these people are doing are not the diets that Dean Ornish or Esselstyn or especially Furman or myself tell patients to eat. It's not even in the same realm of what we tell patients to eat. I mean, these people, Look, they're millennials. I, I was the same when I was 20. I went from one thing to another, one interest to another, and they were they go to these unbelievable extremes. They're doing nothing but juices. Like what's amazing to me is they'll go on like these juice diets where they're basically just it's they're just taking in sugar. That's all they're taking. They're they're hardly getting any fiber. They avoid some of the key nutrients. So they a lot of them like for some reason it's like just they can't even believe that you would ever cook food, which is Look, it's crazy to me, but so th they therefore will avoid all kinds of food groups. They won't eat soy because they somehow believe soy is bad for you, whereas the science does not show that. It all shows that soy is very good for you, but soy is a great source of amino acids and protein. Great, so a lot, the soy milks now are just loaded with calcium. Uh, tofu is loaded with calcium, so they don't get enough calcium. They will avoid grains and legumes because you've got to cook them, or if they get legumes, it's very little. They avoid most grains altogether, so they lack... B, I mean, how could a plant-based diet person lack B vitamins? They end up lacking B vitamins and lacking zinc. Um, they don't take supplements because, you know, they get on this like, oh my God, I'm not going to do anything unless it's from nature. So they get B12 deficiencies. Then they feel like shit and they get sick because they're eating a really bad diet. They're not eating a good diet. Just because they're not eating meat doesn't mean that they're eating a healthy diet. Then they take a bite of meat, which is loaded with calories and loaded with fat, and they get some of this fat back and they feel great. And oh my God, veganism killed me. Veganism didn't kill you. Your bad diet killed you. It's, it's just so... I don't know, blatantly obvious to me. Now, the science behind whether a plant-based diet's gonna kill you is just, I mean, it's just preposterous to even suggest that it would. It's the healthiest diet you could do. And the thing about it is, my diet, I'm not, it's not difficult to, for me to eat my diet. I don't do, oh my God, I wake up every morning, like I wish I could go and eat this, but I gotta eat this instead. It doesn't work like that. 
I have oatmeal and berries and all kinds of stuff for breakfast that tastes great. Sometimes I'll have a tofu scramble and a burrito. Um, you know, my lunches are soups and salads and potatoes. Um, I eat a lot of grains. I eat a lot of dark greens. I eat a lot of legumes. I eat a lot of fruit. I eat all of these foods. So I'm never hungry. I mean, what really surprises me is when people go to a vegan diet and then they still are portion controlling. So they're eating these tiny meals. They're hardly getting any calories and they feel like crap and they don't know why they feel like crap. It should be obvious why you feel like crap. You're not getting enough calories. Uh, but that doesn't happen in my diet. And I'll tell you, you want to go and hang with the vegan bodybuilders or come to some of the veg fests. Like I would do this veg fest in Marshall, uh, Texas, and everyone there was this pillar, just this sparkling beacon of health, like unreal health. I mean, these people are running. They feel great. They're eating all day long. They're having tons of great food. Uh, everybody's happy and they're healthy. These aren't people that are even in the realm of even thinking that they would switch. So my advice to you is totally and completely and utterly ignore YouTube videos, which is ironic because here's a YouTube video. Ignore a millennial who went from one bad diet to another and is just like going on the winds of change and whatever is new is whatever they're gonna popularize on their videos. I mean, they'll go from vegan to selling bone broth in a matter of months. It's absolutely ridiculous. Stick with the scientists that are bringing you good science that talk about what health is. Look at the experts. I mean, the experts at the U.S. World News uh, report on diet. I mean, they said that the top diets, the top diet for health, Ornish is up there. The top general diet is um, the DASH diet, which was actually based on a vegetarian diet, but they made it have some animal products in order to get most people to use it. And the flexitarian diet, which is basically plant-based diet. And then the Mediterranean diet, when done traditionally, is a predominantly plant-based diet. These diets have tons and tons of evidence. If you want to be vegan, you could be vegan easily. Now, we can talk about what deficiencies you could run into. The, the only key supplement you have to take is B12. That got to take it. Got to take it, okay? If you are getting plenty of legumes and grains, you don't have to worry about zinc. My zinc level through the roof, I, uh, fantastic. It's easy to get um, zinc, but if you think you're deficient in that, you can be. Now, women could get deficient in iron, but you know, the crazy thing to me is like these, these YouTubers go to a doctor. If you go to a doctor who's not trained in nutrition, you tell them you're vegan and you got a problem, they're gonna blame it on veganism. They're just gonna say, oh, it's your vegan diet which is absurd. It's just absurd because they'll have a patient right before them who's eating meat and they come in and they're hypothyroid and they're like, oh, you're hypothyroid because of this, that, and the other. Vegan comes in and they're hypothyroid. It's like, oh, it's because you're vegan. Whereas the data shows that vegans do not have an increased risk of hypothyroidism. But anyway, you will see iron deficiencies in people. We see it in meat eaters. We see it in vegans. The answer to that is not to eat meat. In fact, that heme iron is very toxic, very bad. Uh, you could supplement with iron or you could eat a lot of dark green vegetables um, or take a supplement. Um, you can get an omega-3 deficiency. And I think this might be more common than we know. It's still being studied. I take an omega-3 supplement. I take a microalgae. Um, I don't want to eat fish. There's a lot of toxins and dioxins and PVCs. They're not as loaded in uh, omega-3s as they used to be. And fishing is destroying the oceans. And so I will um, take an omega-3 supplement. It's pretty easy. It's an algae supplement. Um, there are these debates over certain amino acids like taurine, which your body can make itself. It's not an essential amino acid. Um, I don't think you have to worry much about that. Creatine, all the bodybuilders and, and a lot of the athletes take creatine. Um, it, there has been some studies showing that it does help vegetarians and it can help you with your exercise performance. It actually may help with cognition. I've trialed it. Um, and sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I, I really haven't noticed much of a difference, but it's something that you could add to supplements. That's basically it. If you're vitamin D deficient, take vitamin D. If you're not, don't. The best way to get vitamin D is the sun. But the bottom line is it is so easy to create an unbelievably healthy plant-based diet that would make you feel fantastic, that would make your numbers rival anybody, that would make you live as long as, as anybody in the world. 
Uh, it's also possible to eat a completely junk food and unhealthy vegan diet. And so you gotta choose appropriately, but choose it based on science, not based on some millennial kid who got a zit while doing a juice fast.